Hi guys, Ian from footballboost.co.uk here and today we're looking at all of the Superfly releases in 2016. We're going to start things off with the Carly Lloyd Special Superflies. They came out in January 2016. They were the special Leave Your Legacy boots. They were worn by Lloyd on January the 23rd for the national team when they played in San Diego. There were only 20 additional pairs made and they were ones that were given away. Nobody really has seen them anywhere, but they were autographed by Lloyd. They have Leave Your Legacy on the back there and they have this extra nice little kind of glitter effect with the gold on the swooshes and at the back, there's three nice big black stars and overall, they are a white boot and it has a few little kind of special details of Carly Lloyd on the sock liner. Overall, a great release to start off 2016 with those Carly Lloyd Superflies. The next boot looks quite similar to those, but it is in fact the 324K Gold CR7 Superflies. They were created to celebrate Ronaldo's ascension to the club all-time leading goal scorer at Real Madrid with 324 goals at the time. They were available exclusively for, through the Nike Football app. That was back in January again. They have a lot of nice little details, the little glitter on the swooshes and on the heel again. And they're based on a previous Vapor release in the line way back when. These were just released for Ronaldo and they have these nice little gold touches. The next release we're looking at is the Women's Pack. They were a blue tin racer blue hyper turquoise bright mango release and it was one of the first times that we saw the way that Nike had worked out how to change the way they knitted the materials in the fly knit and blend the colors around a little bit. So it's quite a nice release in this women's only pack and the mango was on the swoosh and on the sole plate that was detailed out in the silver around the swooshes and it was blue overall on the boot and it was a very nice release for the women to have a Superfly 4 that they could be wearing. The next release was the Metal Flash Pack and in the Metal Flash Pack you were looking at a bright mango and hyper turquoise boot, had a little silver detail on the swoosh. The hyper turquoise really was only seen in the studs, nowhere else on the boot apart from say the sock liner that you can see there. The swoosh itself was in the silver and these were a very nice release. One of the early packs in 2016 for the entire Mercurial range was in this bright mango and it was part of a larger metal flash pack that was released by Nike Football. The next release was the CR7 Quinientos. These followed on from the 324K Golds. They were another commemorative boot for Cristiano Ronaldo. These ones are all about him surpassing 500 career goals. Very much like the Mercurial Superfly CR7 324K Gold, this boot was inspired by a Mercurial Vapor 3 colorway and it features a back heel placement of the CR7 logo. Doesn't have as much perhaps glitter as the other ones do but it is the detail that you can see on the black so it does shine up a little bit. These weren't quite as popular as the 324K Golds. I think potentially Nike made a few more of these than they did of the 324K Golds. The next release we saw was the Techcraft Monochrome Techcraft 3 pack as such. It was the third time that we'd seen a leather Superfly following on from the canvas and the original release of the Techcraft pack. These weren't quite as popular. Nike had some problems with the black running into the white and causing some issues on the upper. But overall, it's quite a nice release. If anybody wanted a white leather boot and you wanted a Superfly, then this would be a great release for you. It had that light bone at the front and then the dynamic fit collar was in the black with the black details in and around that. Talking about black, the next boot that came out was hugely popular and it was in the Academy pack. They sold out very quickly and this was just this all over black boot, black upper, black dynamic fit collar, really crisp looking boot. The only little splash of color that you saw was on those studs and that was in the vault. Also used in the sock liner but you don't see that once your foot is in the boots. These were a massively successful release and sold out very quickly when they came out. With the CR7 Chapter 2 release, we saw the Natural Diamond. This followed on from the Savage Beauty. This was a blue boot with a silver swoosh, some black detailing, and it was all about Ronaldo being able to overcome high pressure and daunting situations in his game. The initial Savage Beauty design had those lava and flame graphics. This was a little bit more subtle, but it did have kind of stony feel to the rear of the boot. They added kind of a, a crusted layer, which was all about that rock and that hard stone, but it still had this really nice, luxurious, deep royal blue tone to it. And also these nice little silver aspects. It was a very popular release, and these were a specific Ronaldo boot. The next pack from Nike was the Radiant Reveal pack. There was a Superfly in that. And as the seasons changed from winter to spring, Nike released this really bright white, appealing boot. Now, it had the white as the base coast, but again, they've used the color fade through the boots that they had created. And it goes from that kind of vault from one end through the orange to the pink at the other end. 
really stand out bright looking boot lovely little bit of design on them and these were very popular on pitch as well as worn by players Nike did a great job of incorporating a lot of colours into one boot and making it a very successful release. Another release that came around very much at the same time was the Women's Radiant Reveal Pack. It was an alternate colourway made just for women to wear. It was the Bright Mango Laser Orange Opti Yellow White release and it was just a follow up to the men's release. It was an option of having kind of a peachy colour at the toe, following into a kind of orange and then with the yellow at the back. And this was a women's specific release. It didn't really get a lot of traction, wasn't a um, big release and it wasn't worn in any major tournaments or anything as such for the women. Another kind of subdued release was the camo pack. It was a bit of a shock drop. People weren't really necessarily expecting to see it, didn't get any player support. Only the Hypervenoms were saw worn by Jamie Vardy. These ones, the Superflies, very much kind of the camo theme and it meant that the boots were quite disguised on pitch. You wouldn't really see them stand out too much against the grass and it had really nice kind of camo visual but again it wasn't massively popular for players to wear or for the public to purchase. A pair of boots that were massively popular, got a lot of headlines, were the what the. So towards the business end of the 15-16 season in early May, Nike made the decision to sign off their long-standing Mercurial Vapor 4 with dramatic fashion. They offered a trademark and truly unique what the paint job, and the swoosh have done that before. They've done it with kind of basketball shoes and sneakers and things like that. First time we've seen it with a football boot, and the idea being that they combined a whole bunch of kind of well-known mercurial paint jobs into one boot, all mended into the Nike skin upper, and those whole bunch of different boots that you can recognize there. If any of your favorites are there, then let me know which one is your favorite out of those. As I said, that was the kind of last Superfly 4 release. So the next thing we saw was the Nike Innovation Summit and they announced the Superfly 5. They gave us a whole bunch of colorways that we could see. There was a black one, a white one, a red one, a blue one, but they were never seen worn by players. These are kind of ones that you could pick up in Nike ID if you wanted to create something like this a little bit later on, but it gave us an idea about what they could do with the sole plate, and it gave us an idea of what the design was gonna look like and colors as well. The very last Superfly 4 was in actually a Nike ID thing. It was all about the heritage, and to end the line, they ended up giving you the option of being able to create some Mercurial Vapor kind of 98 colorways. So you got those iconic kind of silver, yellow, and blue colorways as worn by the original Ronaldo. Now, that was back in 1998 for the uh, French World Cup. There's also kind of black and white options and a blue styling, all definitely off this kind of same styling base. And those are a few options that you could get on Nike ID of the Superfly 4. The very first actual public release of the Superfly 5 was the Spark Brilliance. These are the ones we saw at Euro 2016. And it was the first time that we saw this half and half design employed onto the upper interesting because you've got this kind of pink on one side and the red on the other side tied in with the black and the dynamic fit collar and it was something that some people would like some people wouldn't had the vault for the swooshes and it's definitely a standout release on the pitch official colorway total crimson pink blast black and vault a euro 2016 nike decided to show us a bit more of what could be done with nike id marcus rashford got some blue super flies and we also saw him playing on pitch in a red pair as well as carl walker these were all to do with getting kind of club uh, sorry national team inspired boots onto the feet of players at the tournament they wore them in training and in matches as i said and that was just another example of what you can get out of nike id talking about the men's spark brilliance Previously, let's now look at the Women's Spark Brilliance and it used a very similar design but these were very much based around the US national team and they were designed to be worn at the 2016 Olympics. They did come out a little bit earlier than that, they were announced but then they weren't actually worn until August for the tournament but you would have seen a lot of American women wearing these at the Olympics and the men's team didn't qualify but these were specific women's release anyway and the blue the red and the white very much paired in very nicely with the nike sponsored us uh, women's soccer team after portugal won won the euro 2016 nike made a special nike id available which included the portuguese flag a red boot and gold laces and that was just to commemorate the fact that portugal had won euro 2016. the first release we saw after the euros was in fact the pitch dark pack that didn't get a lot of support on pitch with players. Mainly it was for something kind of academy wise, almost very similar to the academy pack, just a slight twist on it. No players really wore them as I said, but they were predominantly a black boot. The Mercurials had the P 
pink blast on there with the Nike swoosh and the outline of the Nike swoosh. And there's a little reflective element inside those Nike swooshes as well. And they're very much a standout release. The first on pitch colorway we saw for the next season was the Elite Pack. And it was designed for a lot of kind of premium Nike players. Only 11 players wore the Elite Pack. Cristiano Ronaldo was the only Superfly wearer out of the Elite Pack players that were announced. And it has this half and half design going on with it again, but it's quite subtle with the gray and then the combination of the bolt. Quite a bright standout sole plate, which is nice. The dynamic fit collar was in the gray. And this design actually looks a little bit like one of the upcoming designs we're gonna mention for CR7 that has his own specific um, chapter coming up. The first thing I wanna look at is the standout EA Sports FIFA 17 boots. They weren't officially called FIFA 17 boots, but everybody knew that that's what they're all about. It was tied into the launch of FIFA 17 with EA Sports, and they really were a standout pair of boots to look at. They were based on the 16-bit graphics on one side and then the modern-day graphics on the other side, so they had this kind of mix-up with the colours. A lot of blue, a lot of different colours involved, and then the kind of dynamic fit collar was in the orange. They were limited to 1500 pairs, and they were called the EA Sports release. They had a really nice chrome sole plate to look at. Pack-wise, we're moving on and we're looking at the Floodlights pack. These were in the Purple Dynasty Bright Citrus Hyper Grape and it was the second official on-pitch kind of colorway of the 2016-17 season and you were seeing all sorts of Nike sponsored players wearing those like Cristiano Ronaldo and anybody else who was a Superfly wearer. Very nice kind of base of purple with these kind of subtle oranges, orange little touches to them. The Floodlights pack was pretty successful, a lot of people really liked them and a lot of people were seen wearing them. The color combinations were quite nice. The purple tied in with the orange very well with this release. Ronaldo then got his own CR7 chapter three out and that was the CR7 discovery pack. And it was the third chapter of his history. It was looking at his rise to footballing stardom. They tied it in with the fact that he was kind of discovered and burst onto the scene playing for Sporting Lisbon in a friendly against Manchester United. He ignited interest across Europe in his undoubted and evident raw talent. And this November 2016 release included 06, 08, 03, which went back to the time when Ronaldo was in that preseason game and the moment that he was discovered as such. The next thing that Nike did was they did a little kind of um, Nike ID available again for these boots. They were to coincide with the chapter three release. Nike revealed this Nike ID Superfly option. And again, it was based on an old Vapor 3 colorway that tied in with the design kind of inspiration for these chapter three boots for Ronaldo. The next release we saw was the Techcraft 2.0 pack. The Techcraft 2.0 was the fourth Techcraft release for the Superfly, but the first time that it had been used on the Superfly 5. And at this point, Nike decided to incorporate Allegria leather with their releases and make that even more soft and supple and premium. These are the ones that were handcrafted in Italy. And one of the other details was that they had stripped out the flyknit layer, so it was definitely just the leather on top of the Brio cables and all that technology in the boot and a really nice upper with a kind of intricate and subtle embossed pattern added to the leather that Nike said that would give an even softer feel and more responsive touch with these boots. So there's one more to go after this pack, but we're looking now at the last release of 2016, which is the Dart Lightning pack. We're nearly finished, but Nike's final color collection released for 2016 saw this aptly named Dart Lightning pack steal the headlines in mid-November it acted as the follow-up to those previous Floodlight collections, but it was definitely a bit more understated with a black base. And then with these, they had electric green and the blue matched together on half and half of the front of the Superfly black sole plate and a little bit of that orange on the studs. The next boot to look at is the CR7 Victorious. These aren't going to be available until January the 10th, but I wanted to mention them now as they have been revealed this year. We'll probably include them in the 2017. Which guys was your favorite release of the year? Are you looking forward to the Victorias? Will you try and get a pair? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and as always, go enjoy your football.